Every Sunday, we do a prophecy update because of the geopolitical events and their significance as far as their fulfillment uh, as it relates to Bible prophecy. And we turn our attention primarily to Israel because we see it as God's prophetic clock. I mentioned last week that there was an event that took place a couple of weeks ago that for the most part escaped the notice of many, especially the media here in the United States. But I believe it set into motion the fulfillment of three significant prophecies, all sort of working in concert, one with the other. A terrorist by the name of Imad Mughnia, who had a $5 million reward on his head for his capture and or his death, was assassinated. This guy was a bigwig. And it was huge. Uh, What makes this so different from all the rest is not just how dangerous he was, but that all the fingers are pointing at Israel as the one responsible for his assassination. I want to look at these three prophecies real, real quick here. The first of which is one I'm sure most of you are familiar with. And it is the prophecy that Iran, with Russia, will attack Israel. This article from uh, the Debka file online with the headline reading, Iran and Israel poised for possible military clash over Mughniya's death. Tehran is bent on avenging the death of its top terror tactician, Imad Mughniya, who was struck down by a bomb planted in his car in Damascus Tuesday, February 13th. The article goes on to say, Tehran, Damascus, and Hezbollah are determined to inflict military terror uh, punishment on Israel, whom they accuse of indicating, uh, liquidating, pardon me, to inflict military terror punishment on Israel, whom they accuse of liquidating their key agent a military clash appears unavoidable. So because of the assassination at the hands of Israel of this Mughnia, they are now promising a punishing retaliation at the hands of Iran, primarily and chiefly because understand that Iran and Syria slash Hezbollah, as we'll talk about in just a moment, are together in concert with each other in their plans to destroy and attack Israel. This is the prophecy in Ezekiel chapter 38, primarily verse 5, where it describes Persia, which is the ancient name of Iran, coming together with Russia in this alliance of nations and this allied attack on Israel. The common denominator with all of these nations is they are Muslim. It is not a matter of If this is going to happen, it is a matter of when. And I believe that this assassination has set in motion the fulfillment of, I think it brings us one step closer to the fulfillment of Ezekiel 38. The second prophecy that this assassination, I think, set in motion was the prophecy about Damascus in Syria with Hezbollah coming against Israel perhaps precipitating a preemptive strike by Israel against Syria. And Damascus will be destroyed. We'll look at this prophecy in just a moment. But this uh, article was in Haaretz with the headline reading, Yadlin on Hezbollah. Vengeance is an integral part of Shiite culture. Referring to the February 12 car bombing assassination of Hezbollah terror mastermind Imad Mughnia, Yadlin said that vengeance is an integral part of Shiite culture. Yadlin said that Hezbollah may wait until the end of the traditional 40-day mourning period to avenge the death of Mughnia. Former Mossad chief Danny Yatom responded that Israel must be prepared prior to the end of the 40-day period as well. This is the prophecy in Isaiah chapter 17, verses 1 through 3, where it describes that Damascus, which is the capital of Syria, will be destroyed and reduced 
to a pile of rubble. Many Bible scholars who study Bible prophecy believe that Israel will indeed launch a preemptive strike against Syria, the home of Hezbollah. I believe with this assassination that it is very possible with the threat of this retaliation, of this revenge, which is Shiite Islam. They, they will not sleep at night until they mete out their revenge. It is a command in the Quran. So with the assassination of this key man, it is incumbent on them a command to them to retaliate and mete out this revenge against Israel. However, Israel knows this, and it is very possible and probably even inevitable that Israel will not only, uh, as we'll see in a moment again, uh, be on the defensive, but it is very possible that they will launch an offensive against Syria. So it's very possible that this could be the fulfillment of or the beginning of the fulfillment of Isaiah 17. The third prophecy that I believe this moves one step closer to uh, is the prophecy where all of these nations say, come, let us destroy Israel. Let us wipe her off the map so she ceases to be a nation anymore. Well, Nasrallah, according to Haaretz, who ran this article, was quoted as saying, Israel to be destroyed within years. Israel will be destroyed within a few years. Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah told a rally in Beirut yesterday, destroying Israel is an inevitable outcome, a historic law, a divine doctrine, Nasrallah said. When Israel won't have an army, it won't survive. And that's what I said about Mughniya's blood leading to the elimination of Israel. This is almost verbatim the prophecy in the Psalms. Psalm 83, verses 1 through 8. Let me read this psalm, this prophecy. It's a song, a psalm of Asaph. O God, do not keep silent, be not quiet. O God, be not still. See how your enemies are astir, how your foes rear their heads. With cunning they conspire against your people. They plot against those you cherish. Come, they say, <laughs> watch this, quote, let us destroy them as a nation. This is almost verbatim what Nasrallah is saying. And not Nasrallah alone. How about Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, who has been quoted many times as saying, come, let us destroy Israel as a nation. Do you realize this is not just words on a paper in your Bible? This is not just words on a page in the Psalms. This is a prophecy written long before that foretold what it would be like in the end, before the return of Jesus Christ for his church. That they would say that the enemy nations would conspire together, would ally together, would say together, come, let us destroy Israel. It is happening right now before our very eyes. It is on the news. It occupies the headlines. It's on the internet. It's in our newspapers. But it's in our Bibles. God said it would happen before it happens. And God says, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen before it happens. So when it happens, you'll know I am God. It's happening right now as we speak.